Gasoline prices in the USA right now are at a seven year high. And for people that were already considering maybe getting an electric vehicle at some point, well, now might actually be a great time to make the switch. Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me in this episode where we're going to be talking about a very specific topic, kind of continuing the conversation we've been having, the financial conversation about cost of ownership for electric vehicles. If you have one or if you've been thinking of getting one, it's an important topic to cover. And today we're going to talk about, let's just call it the fueling costs of owning an electric car. And this is a question I get asked a lot. There's no specific answer for everyone, but people say, how much does it cost to charge your Nissan Leaf, your Tesla, whatever? The, they're obviously different battery sizes and the bigger the battery, the more it's going to cost. But oftentimes the bigger the battery, the more efficient the car is overall. Not all the time, but sometimes. So for today, I'm just gonna pull up my electricity bill because the first step in doing all of this is seeing how much your electricity costs. And the most affordable way to do this, really the only way you're gonna come out ahead financially is if you are charging you know, at home or, or somewhere that you, you have control over the cost of the electricity. If you're using public chargers, uh, those are considered convenience charging. And so they cost a lot more, uh, substantially more, uh, because they're charging you, you know, for a profit versus what you're paying for your electricity in your own home. Or maybe you're in a situation where you get to charge at work, that might even be free. That'd be an even greater cost savings to you. But again, today I'm just going to compare what my home electricity costs and uh, how much that relates to the total cost of charging our vehicles with electricity instead of using gasoline like most people do. So what we're taking a look at here is my last bill for my electricity provider and uh, the kind of information we're going to focus on is right here in this circle. So I do see that there is a difference between this total price that I guess we paid and this dollar amount here but for simplicity's sake let's just live here in this little circle to do our math. So you know you can look at your bill and you know it might tell you what the cost per kilowatt hour is but then there's all sorts of stuff like uh, just standard fees that they charge you. There's like a minimum just to get electricity to your house. So really when you're factoring in and trying to calculate how much your electricity costs, you really should just take the total. So for me, it's just easiest to take the entire bill, the total bill for the month, and then divide it by uh, the electricity, which is measured here. You see KWH, kilowatt hours. That's the unit of electricity or the, the measurement that we'll be using not only for this, but also to determine, you know, what size battery you have in the car, which will be the next step. But let's just start with this first one. I'm going to pull up my calculator here. I'm just going to type in the, you know, in fact, I'll just, I'll be even more conservative. Let's just use this, this big number up here. I want to be fair uh, when I'm using this. This might just have some other fees on it. I don't really know, but obviously this is the amount I paid. So let's just use the 109.29 to do our math. So 109.29. That's the price, then divide that by the kilowatt hours use, which was 894 kilowatt hours. And then that gives us, uh, you know, after the decimal here, this is the cents we're looking at. And this lines up really nicely with what I've always heard is the average price for electricity in the United States, which is around 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's about what we're looking at here, just a little bit over, but let's just make it easy and let's just call it an even 12 cents per kilowatt hour that I am paying. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do after that is take the cost per kilowatt hour, which is the 12 cents here. We're gonna multiply it by the battery pack size. So you may not necessarily know what the size of the battery is of your car that you either own or that you're looking at, but you should be able to quickly find that information. I'm gonna use my Tesla as an example, and it makes it easy because it just has a big old 85 number on the back, which indicates how big the battery is. And that's an 85 kilowatt hour pack, which is quite large, and it's good for about 250 miles of range. So let's clear this out. And the new equation that we're going to be doing next, now that we know our cost per kilowatt hour, is take the cost, multiply it by the size of the battery pack, and that'll tell us the cost that it's going to require to charge the battery from empty to full. So in my case, we're doing the 12 cents, going to multiply it by the 85 kilowatt hours size battery in my Tesla Model S. And people that are more familiar with electric vehicles will know that the 85 is not really 
the usable amount. It's the full size, and this gets a little bit into the weeds here, but just so you know that I know, and I don't get comments about it, I do understand that the usable amount of this battery pack or any battery pack is always gonna be slightly less than the actual size because they put protective buffers on the end so that it never uh, decreases too low and it never gets charged entirely full. That's just a way to protect the battery and maintain its health. But again, I'm gonna be conservative here and try to keep it as simple. So again, we're multiplying 12 cents by 85 kilowatt hours and uh, so for my Tesla, and we'll just round down again because I did overestimate and I want to make the math easier. It's saying 10.2, you know, dollars if I was charging from a, a literal 0% to 100% full in the battery, which is never the case. You're never going to be, hopefully, at 0% charge. And a lot of the times you don't want to charge to 100% full uh, unless you need it. That's another part of just maintaining your battery, just kind of a good practice that a lot of electric vehicle owners abide by. So let's just call it $10. I'm gonna be spending $10 every time I charge my Model S from basically empty to almost full. And in reality, I'll be spending less, more like $9, honestly, because I kind of live in between the 20% to you know 80% state of charge range. Uh, but again, don't want to get too technical. Let's just call it an even $10 for me to fill my Tesla Model S battery. And how far does that get me? So in my Model S, realistically, it's rated for higher, but I can probably get 250 miles, you know, if I'm mixing city driving and highway driving. So this is kind of the range that a lot of vehicles, electric vehicles are in right now. A lot of them are even under this, uh, but they're all pretty much over 200. So again, this is a good, I think, basis for a lot of people looking at electric cars. Some of the older ones that you might buy used from two, three, four years ago are gonna be under this, but newer cars are, this is kind of the representative number. 250 miles on a charge is a good place to be at with electric vehicles in 2021 right now. So now that we know that it cost me $10 to charge my car to drive 250 miles, what we're comparing against now is a gasoline car and of course, there's a huge variance of uh, gas vehicles out there as far as their miles per gallon efficiency. So again, I'm just gonna kind of take, you know, just a round number and average here. And again, I wanna be conservative. I'm gonna round up. I'm going to use 30 miles per gallon as kind of my average. I don't know if that's really the average of, you know, most cars in the United States. Um, a lot of cars definitely are not uh, that efficient. Here in Texas, see a lot of big trucks and SUVs uh, that certainly aren't getting 30 miles per gallon, but again, I wanna be conservative to really make this a fair comparison. So the next thing we have to do to compare to gas is to take that distance number, 250. So a gas car driving the same distance, 250 miles, divide it by, we're gonna say generously, 30 miles per gallon, and that should give us how many gallons we need if we were going to the gas station. So if you wanna go 250 miles, in a 30 mpg car you're going to need 8.3 gallons of gasoline and then we need to multiply the gallons of gas by what a gallon of gas costs and so uh, the range here in the in uh, the us i heard on on the news i think was the average price was about three dollars and forty cents and um, let's just round down to three dollars to be kind of catching people in the middle um, of that uh, or below that average even uh, because it is lower here in Texas and again just being very conservative with this calculation. So we're going to uh, multiply the 8.3 gallons needed to go 250 miles by the three dollars it's going to cost you per gallon and then that's going to give you the total cost to go 250 miles in a gasoline car that goes 30 miles per gallon. So previously we saw that it would cost me ten dollars roughly for my Model S to go that far, it's gonna cost $25 for a pretty efficient gasoline vehicle to travel that same distance. And this is where the cost savings is pretty significant. This may seem like not a big deal in one trip, but I mean, calculate how many miles you drive a month, how many miles you drive a year, and then do the same math to figure out how much you could be saving. It's quite a significant number and again, I was being very conservative with this calculation. So $25 for a gas car to travel the same distance that it would cost me $10 in my Model S to drive.
people. So I'd be curious to hear your initial thoughts, seeing those numbers. Tell me what you think, if you were surprised, if you weren't, or if you still think that owning a gas car might be a cheaper option in the long run. In some cases, it may be. And obviously, certain gasoline cars, you know, I'm counting hybrids, not plug-in hybrids necessarily, but just hybrid vehicles, uh, you know, that do get very high miles per gallon. There is a point where the gasoline efficiency of gas cars, primarily hybrids, uh, will be cheaper overall than buying an electric car and uh, you know charging it that way. I understand that, but we do have a lot of cool 100% electric cars coming out and as battery costs come down and you know the gasoline prices are going to come down too, but gas is always up and down over the years. You never know, it fluctuates a lot. Battery prices are steadily just coming down. So it's becoming cheaper. Electric cars are going to very quickly, I think, reach cost parity with gasoline cars and so Really, when you look at purchasing the cars, again, I think the best way to get an electric vehicle now uh, for the best affordability is to buy a used electric car. But once you have a car and you're comparing them, gasoline versus electric, uh, the cost to charge, the cost to fuel a gasoline car, those comparisons are where you're going to see a lot of savings potential, especially now while gasoline prices are high, but it's already you know, going to be a cost saving uh, measure even as gasoline prices inevitably go down. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to ask any questions. Again, this was just specifically on this aspect of, of EV ownership. And I think that in the next video, probably going to talk about more general cost of ownership, maintenance, any repairs. And again, I'm probably going to be focusing on the Tesla that we've owned for a couple years now because uh, I think it's a good example because we've had to do more to that car than we have really to any other electric car that I've owned previously. So stay tuned for that episode, probably the next one we're going to do, but thank you for joining me on this one today and I'll see you next time.